Today, we're gonna to be wiring up the Leviton Structured Media Center. This is the DMARC for the house, and this has been wired up previously by me, but the needs have changed so much that it's just time for me to go ahead, redo it, put the new gear in there that I need to have in there, and unfortunately, that's gonna mean that I had to take everything out to start the process. So we're gonna be starting from scratch. I figured this is a good time to go over the how-to in case you want to get one of these systems yourself. So the Leviton 42 inch structured media center can definitely handle a lot of gear. And we've got an additional bay down here. And so let's look at some of the gear that we're gonna be putting in here today. So we've got quite a bit of gear. I've got my power supplies for everything. Those are just gonna be in the way. So that's probably some cable management that I'm looking at right there. I've got the 16 port gigabit switch here, which is a TP-Link. I've got a eight port trend net, which may or may not go in there. I'm actually tending to probably not put this in. I've got the AR150, and this is a good backup router for the house. We use this in case everything else goes down for a prolonged period of time to provide connectivity. I've also got the four port SFP Plus. That's probably one of the biggest changes in my setup is that I've got a good deal of fiber that needs to be routed through this. And so this is the CRS305, one gig and four S plus, and this is a PoE switch. These are great little guys. If you can get one of these, I really strongly recommend it if you are looking to get into SFP Plus and 10 gigabit networking. As well, I've got a pile of these Leviton uh, little brackets. I've got our coax distribution here. And so this will provide the antenna in the house to all the drops throughout the house also. And I've got the Samsung SmartThings puck here, which is part of our home's IoT system. Uh, having done this in the past, I think one of the biggest things that I took away was that this is going to save me a lot of effort. Routing a ton of cables up from the bottom here, up through this and up to here is a huge pain in the butt. And we finally have our, this is an old school, but still working really good, 825 volt amp rocket fish UPS. And so this fits just nicely inside this. Links to all of this stuff is in the description below. That is a lot of power supplies and we've got a lot of Velcro to deal with it. Uh, some of the stuff in here will be probably a little bit, especially this firm. And so I will use that for the coax here, but I would not use that for anything that is a networking cable and certainly not for fiber cables. We are gonna get a twist so that we can maintain a nice kind of bend radius on the fiber. We're gonna have that down there, I believe. So if you know here, I've got four pipes. Three of these are going directly up into the attic. The fourth one here is coming out here and this will spill over into the raceway. That's gonna be the next video and that is me wiring up and finishing all of the stuff on the racks. This here is for the fiber connections, the coax connections and the cat sick. So two of the things that are gonna to dictate to us what we can do is the Cable Matters Cat 6 patch panel that I've got right here. This is already wired up. There's not a ton of extra uh, slack on the wires here. Each one of these ports goes to one of the drops that I've got on the workbench. So I can't really mess with this. This is gonna to have to stay in the position it's in. These here are really not gonna to be too flexible about what I can do with them. I'm probably just going to go ahead, push them up like this and then have them come down like this onto the attachment plate that I'll probably put right here. So I am gonna use some of the zip ties for attaching these to each other. And if you're gonna zip tie things, if you put them into a square, if you can, if there's six of them, you can put three and three. It'll make for a tighter grouping of them. And again, these are very firm cables, so I don't want them to be changing their shape on me. So I'll hook this in over here. Take a look really quick at what I was just doing there. So I've got this bundle squared up here very nicely. And if you look here, you've got side attachment mount points. So these side attachment mount points are built for putting some either Velcro or some zip ties in and then tying off to whatever the cable is. They're basically your integrated cable management for a structured media panel. 
So the next thing that I'll do here is bring this connection bundle over. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm going to pre-do this one. Because it's definitely going to lose shape here. And sound off in the comments below if you hate me for doing this and not using Velcro. I would love to hear why I have made such a horrible mistake here. <laughs> Point will be down here and kind of tight to get into. Okay, Let's go ahead and bring these on up now. Okay, now we've got our Leviton splitter that we're gonna be installing here. This is one in and eight outs. And I was smart enough to mark the in here with a piece of tape so I know which one. And there's an extra cable here. This one is actually going back into the attic and it feeds back and powers the actual antenna that is up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw these on. and be mindful of the wire length that you've got here to deal with on these. And you basically want the longest wire on the further side and the shortest wire closer. And I don't like this bin that I put in that, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo this one. Is it important? No. Will I notice it forever? Yes. And this does a good job of picking up our local signal with just a handmade little antenna that I crafted if there is emergency weather in the area. I'm going to get this last coax on there.
and that's pretty good without having to re-terminate anything. Okay, now we've got the coax in here and we've saved quite a bit of space as a result of redoing the layout of where these were at. So I had looked at the TP-Link being in this position over here, which would have been nice and I actually put the screws in there for that, but I ran into an issue where the cables that I bought were not long enough. So if you see this, this is just close, but not gonna work. So I'm gonna actually be moving this and splitting the distance, drilling some holes here, since I already have this drilled into the back here, and that way I can just have these line up, and I'm gonna have the top of it somewhere right about here so that they can kind of span the reach up a little bit, and that way I can actually get my fingers in, and if I need to change out a cable, not a big deal. And so I'll go ahead and just drill these holes here, Okay, so we've got our six ports connected here that are connected to the workbench. The next thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and look at some of the placements that I'll be dealing with here. So this doesn't have a mounting bracket with it. So I'm gonna use a trick, which is basically using some Velcro, screwing in the Velcro, and then attaching and wrapping it around to secure this in place. This does have little mounty uh, spots on it. So this one I can get mounted in here without too much extra trouble. but I do want to leave clearance on this side for cables that'll be routed back up and out. So I think things will come down here. My coil should be somewhere around here for the fiber. And so there's this. I've got this guy here, which I guess I could put in here like this. This seems pretty decent also. I think I'm gonna do it like that. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna get in here is the Smart Things Hub. And I'm going to try to get this to where I can put a piece of Velcro this way and this way across it. And so I will just screw a piece of Velcro, it looks like right in. And luckily some of my servers have come with some pretty nice long pieces of Velcro. So that means both directions are well, so I just need two of these. Okay, so I made a little cross out of Velcro here that I can unravel and put the device into. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and get the screw kind of started here. And we're gonna put this little device over here. So we'll need to drill one more hole right around here. Okay, now we're gonna get the little AR-150 in here. And this one has a reset switch on it, so I want to be pretty careful not to actually depress the reset switch with the Velcro. But it looks like I'll clear that. And it has a little fan here also. It has a very, very small fan in it that'll move some air out of it also. And we have our last piece of gear that we're going to be putting in here. This one we're going to be, make sure we have the orientation pretty darn good here. Oh boy. Yeah, it's going to want to be like that, but that's not going to work out really. Now we really can see that this is starting to come together and look pretty darn good. We're next gonna deal with our fiber and to do this, we're gonna create a loop section down here that we'll be able to loop these and then feed them up to here and also feed them back up to here where they'll go up to the raceway and off to the servers. Now I'm gonna actually wrap the edges with some electrical tape on both sides of all of this so that it won't actually cause any tension or any scratching on the cabling. Never met something that electric tape couldn't fix. So we've got our electric tape fix here and let's go ahead and get these fixed into place. Okay, so I'll start with this one. Try my best to unwrap this very gently. This one, we will be using just our Velcro ties. Start by wrapping this up here. And if there's any network engineers in the audience, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize to you right now.
And then I got that one in there. I think I'm actually gonna try to bundle this wire together in case I ever need to do anything with it. I'll be able to hopefully isolate it a little bit. We'll get this next fiber strand in here. Pay a little bit better attention to that first spool wrap this time. And so we've got our second cable wrapped up there. As we can see, this cable has had a few issues in the past. Okay, and we've got our final strand here that is coming from the interior of the house. So we'll get this one coiled up as well. And for our final port on this four port, we're gonna have one that goes over to the networking gear on the rack. And that is just for the 10 gigabit stuff. And we will have 40 gigabit stuff coming in here. Possibly we will have one wrap of the 40 gigabit. It may just go straight from the rack straight to the other server internally and connect to that from the 40 gigabit switch. Still haven't quite decided on exactly what to do with that. And this one is coming from the inside, like I said. So it is connected to the Microtech 24 port with two SFP plus. Uh, this is always kind of a tight fit and they make bigger UPSs for sure, but this is really about all that I can fit inside here. I've got an old work box that I have put in here and we'll basically be feeding this up. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get this cable fed up in here. If I can remember how I got this in here in the past, oh my gosh. It looks like I drilled a hole, but not a huge, there it is maybe, there it goes, okay. Okay, and these are super handy. These are UL listed. Make sure if you get any little it, tiny extension cords like this that they are UL listed.
this one power cable that we've got connected here is spanned up here and it now is supplying power to this power strip. Redo some cabling here so I'm gonna get the right radius on this. That looks pretty good right there. I think I'll give it a cut right here. And I'm gonna mush it out. There we go. Needs to be able to get the jacket inside there. Got lucky and still had one here. Okay, now that we've got this, we can go ahead and get the first item plugged in here and tucked up. All right, that's actually pretty darn nice. I uh, like the way that it came out. Okay, we now have our power backup for our structured media center. Everything is wired up. And let's take a real quick look at some of the job here on the sides. There are provided little tie straps there and you can use just a little piece of Velcro and uh, adhere things to it. I made this just uh, kind of on the fly here using two of the shelves and actually aligning them in this fashion. Also, I made sure to line them with electrical tape so they didn't have any rough edges. Tried to keep a good radius. I coiled up the three loops that I had here, and we've got these three loops here going back to the interior of the house. This loop is broke over to the racks, and we will be dealing with all of the racks and the networking for that soon. And so we've got this really great switch here. Very much recommended if you are just getting into 10 gigabit networking. This makes it really easy to get up and going. Also, we've got our home's Samsung SmartThings uh, IoT router here. We've got a backup device. Uh, this is a GL iNet, and this is an AR150. This device is capable of doing backup routing and some other cool things also. We'll talk more about this device later, I'm sure. And we've got our 16-port gigabit switch here, which is a TP-Link. We've got our nice little uh, cable spanned over to our Cable Matters Cat6 patch panel, and this goes over to... There's six of these on each one of the uh, ports for the desk. I also have our antenna system in here and the power for that is supplied right here. See that little green light there kind of. And uh, this is actually now working. So we should be able to get uh, over the air transmissions inside the house again. Good if there's an emergency to be able to find out what's going on on the weather. And yeah, that's it. I think this has been a really fun wiring job. A lot of work, a lot of effort, and there's a lot of things that had to get moved just a little bit. That's kind of always the thing. You just have to move things just a little bit at the end. So this had to be moved a little bit. This had to be moved a little bit. This had to be moved a little bit. And that really, you know, it's hard to plan out until you get doing it. So just go into it patient, have time to actually do whatever you need to do and uh, not do a bad job. Do it once, do it right, never have to do it again. That's hopefully what you can have at the end of this project. All right, everybody, send up. Let me know if you've got any questions about this, and I will try to answer them as best as possible. I'm going to go ahead, close the case on this project.